Who stole my country, Australia? The country I now live in is so far removed from the country I grew up in. There was once a, res a lot of respect for people's privacy and their differences. It wasn't perfect, but it was so far removed from what we have evolved into, it's almost unimaginable to the younger generation. When I was young, we were actively taught at school the heinous nature of despotic powers that stripped certain sections of their society of all basic rights. There was Hitler, Mao Zedong, Stalin. The way the Nazi regime operated was top of the list of government bad practice. They actually had a ministry for public enlightenment and propaganda. Try to imagine a neighbour being dragged from their homes in the night or day and taken away for some crime. What crime? Their behaviour was against the racial hygiene policy. The, the general population was so thoroughly manipulated by the uh, this, all this propaganda that they actually justified it in their minds. They could see something take place that by all standards of decency in a civilised society would invoke outrage, but they were told they were Jews, they were dirty, dangerous, a threat to uh, good society, exempt from any natural sympathy. And not forgetting the Jehovah's Witnesses or the homosexuals. Their crime was a choice crime. And the average citizen was considered that was their own fault. They can change their beliefs or practices. They deserve all they get for the greater good of our enlightened and healthy society. And what was, uh, what was our reaction to that in Australia? We went to war to kill that ideology. <sighs> Australians have allowed themselves to be mentally manipulated into the idea that there is a threat amongst us. The reality is you have more chance of dying in a car crash. In Australia, 100 people have died from COVID so far and about 500 in car crashes in the same period. You have more chance of winning a large prize in a lottery than of dying of the so-called COVID-19. And if you are under 60, well, you have a chance of winning a big, big lotto. Australians have accepted the propaganda that anyone has a differing opinion on the vaccine question is an anti-vaxxer and therefore an enemy to the health and well-being of society, a serious threat to the health of children, a nutter, unscientific, exempt from all natural sympathy. This was brought home to me this week. I was talking to a journalist who is an old friend and I brought up to her the case of the mother who had a child ripped from her arms by the police and was recently arrested in Sydney for holding a placard calling on end to the lockdowns. My friend initially showed some sympathy for the mother and child, but then blurted out, wait a minute, but she's an anti-vaxxer. And in that second of realisation, all sympathy for the mother and her child disappeared as she now had no right to any sympathy. She then looked at me and had another shot. Oh my God, she said, you're an anti-vaxxer. She already knew that, but realised who she was talking to and became embarrassed by her reaction. And it hit me. What a wicked situation has been manufactured by the media, media, media and the politicians and their propaganda to promote their greedy and dangerous wealth plans. The Australian newspaper just reported on Friday, that was the 22nd just gone, that nearly 11,000 people in one day in Victoria, they called in the distancing dobbing line to report on their neighbours, friends and people they knew. It is natural that people might lose sympathy for certain things like a murderer, a child molester, a rapist if they're given a long jail, a jail sentence. But it's un-Australian and very wrong that we've allowed decent citizens, child-loving parents to be bullied, victimised and relegated to a place of scorn and contempt. Where are the voices crying foul for this travesty of justice and fair play? Why are the civil liberties organised and silent? Why are they so fearful to rise against the media propaganda? Where are the pro-choice abortionists? They've been screaming my body, my choice for decades, but I've found some of them have embraced the we hate anti-vaxxers movement with a passion. Why is it a sacred right over a woman when it comes to abortion, yet it is not our right over our bodies when it's a vaccine? And the Greens, the Greens are the greatest contradiction in the political landscape. They stop uh, toxic damage to trees and can't be bothered to worry about bodies. Who stole my country? It's been a slow theft that's been happening for decades and we're at the pointy end of, in a society that embraces the Nazi mantra 
that the greater good overrides personal choice and liberty. We will see new laws coming on the back of this so-called pandemic. The reality is there was and is no pandemic. We can clearly see that the numbers show it was nothing more than an average flu sickness that is out of the range, was not out of the range of normal. The only abnorm, abnormality is the reaction. It has shown that the world is fertile ground for manipulation and the future is not looking bright. We've been utterly failed politically. The coalition government is guilty of a crime against its citizens. At a time they should have shown strength and courage, they have collapsed into fear and enacted pointless, restrictive laws that destroyed large sections of our economy. Their stupidity is breathtaking. They can throw money that the country doesn't have, like drunken sailors, hoping to divert attention from the destruction that they caused. They inflamed fear, and when they should have been showing courage, they relied on questionable outside advice and attacked any rhetoric that questioned their decisions. At the Informed Medical Options Party, IMOP, we want our country back. There is no greater loss than the right of a citizen and his children to lose freedom over their own bodies. Resist tyranny and embrace freedom. Our forefathers died to secure freedom. We should be prepared to do no less. Thank you.